What is neutral? From the fighting game glossary, neutral, the stage of a fight where neither player is blocking or getting hit by anything, and you're trying to figure out the best way to start or continue your game plan. There's a bit of an implicit assumption that the characters are not point blank from each other, so there's some wiggle room to move around and use a wide assortment of attacks. Footsies is one important aspect of playing the neutral game, and you'll often hear people talk about the neutral. For example, Ryu loses the neutral in that matchup means that Ryu has a hard time finding a place on the screen where he can start his game plan without putting himself at risk. This part's going to be important in a second. Another common use of neutral is just any time your character is not blocking, being hit, or knocked down, even if you're point blank. If your opponent attacks you with a string, you might say, I return to neutral in the middle of your string. This implies there's a gap, so you have a chance to try evading or attacking. That is not a good explanation of neutral right there. Don't listen to that part. Uh, I can also mean neutral on block. Okay, that doesn't matter. And this also isn't the... This right here is not the explanation of neutral that exactly clicked. But here's just a good starting point for neutral. Neither player is blocking or getting hit. You're trying to figure out a way to start your game plan. Losing neutral is like having some sort of risk or you put yourself at risk pretty often trying to find the right spot to be at because you want to run your game plan. Okay. With that in mind, coming back here to Melty. I think the problem I've always had when someone tries to explain neutral to me is that it's very freeform. They'll say, oh, just move around, find your spot, get to a place you want to be to attack. You want to be closer if your character's got stuff that's like right in front of them, or you want to be farther if you have ways to keep people from getting in. That really rough explanation never clicked with me. Uh, it always sounded like you just make up stuff as you go, and then eventually you get in and you get a hit, and you get to do your cool-ass combo. That's always how I understood it. So, when playing neutral, I never really had a good groundwork to know what I was going to do. All I knew is that I need to get from point A to point B, where I can hit them. Okay. So... I think now's a good chance to stop and talk about some other important things that kind of get in your way before you can learn about neutral. Um, I think it's hard to really focus on neutral if you don't understand what your character's supposed to do, what your opponent's character is trying to do, and if you're fighting yourself to land things. Like, uh, if you don't know your BNBs and you're like, oh no. How do I keep going? You're going to be thinking more about how do I combo this instead of how do I get in to start this combo. So I think an essential step to eventually learning neutral is having a solid game plan, knowing your combos, and being proficient with those. If you're still dropping them a lot, I think you have other priorities instead of neutral. Because the game kind of can just play out you don't have to think too much about neutral to have a successful game sometimes. Like, for example, in my gameplay, I'd sometimes just wait back here and do this. Because if they mess up and get too close and get hit by this, I kind of just win the game. That's another part of neutral that I just thought was freeform. I was like, oh, I'll just jump around and stuff will eventually happen. But we'll talk about why you need to seize that advantage in a moment. So, prior to really digging into neutral, have a solid game plan, know your combos, know what your character is going to do. Then when you're ready to start thinking about neutral, you have to think about what your opponent's character wants to do. Um, in offense, you'll run into options like this a lot. So Nanya has a very good DP. So that means when I'm playing him on offense, that is an option that I have to consider that he has. Because I can't just force block strings on him and expect him always to respect it. 
because at some point he could just throw out a DP and blow me up. So on offense and defense, that's something I got to be aware of is, oh, he has this option. The explanation of neutral that finally clicked for me was to try to think of neutral interactions as offense and defense interactions. And it's a bit weird to think about that. At first, uh, I felt it was weird to think of it in that way because in offense and defense, usually it's very consistent. I start offense by making you block. I somehow got in, now you have to block. And this is very consistent. You just have to start blocking or if I'm being attacked, I have to start blocking, like stuff like that. And there are certain ways around that, like using a DP, uh, jumping out of pressure if you think they're gonna try to throw you. There's stuff like that that can go into that offense-defense mindset. But what didn't click to me about thinking of neutral interactions in this sense is the fact that the timing is very different and there are a lot of options in neutral as opposed to offense and defense. So let's take an example. So we have the AI set to all guard. So on offense, if I'm trying to just get pressure on someone, I'll usually just do buttons and then eventually I get pushed out. Now, if I get to do offense again, I'll now think, oh, last time they blocked everything. So this time I'm gonna throw. Now with that throw in the equation, the defender has to play a little differently and I play a little differently because now I'm trying to get that throw. So there's two states right here. There is, I'm going to just attack and I'm going to throw. Those are two important states to think about. Let's take that over to neutral. So let's say in neutral, I am going to, we're gonna play grounded for now just to keep it very simple. Let's say in neutral, I'm either going to wait or I'm going to attack. My two options are wait and attack. Let's say that my opponent's two options are also like wait and attack. So I obviously want to get in and attack, but if I get in an attack at the same time as them, maybe my attack is slower. That means I'm going to lose if I try to challenge them with the same timing. So then the goal for me is to wait until they make that motion to go in and then challenge them after they've missed their attack. Now, obviously there's, we're gonna get more to layers here, but let's say if you just have an on and off mode, those are your only two modes. Even in this, there are a lot of variations to the timing that we could go at. It's not like three, two, one, go, and we just have to take our action like that. Once we're just in neutral, these interactions could happen at any time. So I could just be waiting for a very long time for something to happen. And if my opponent just doesn't want to come in, maybe they have a life lead, maybe they have a positional advantage, they don't need to come at me. And now this is where a lot of times my logic shut down because then I'm like, okay, so waiting here isn't working. My off switch is not working. So now I have to go on and I have to be the one to push the attack. That's not bad thinking in its own, but the issue is I didn't think too much about the variety of actions I can take in neutral. Going back to the example of offense I gave, like my basic offense is I just keep doing buttons until I'm pushed out, and my second offense is, oh, he's gonna block, so now I've got to throw. Going back to that, that's very binary. I either attack you or I throw you. My thinking in neutral up until pretty recently was pretty similar. I'm either going to wait and do this, my favorite button, or I'm gonna have to attack you. And so usually how I did that was I would do this, jumping with like a falling button, or I would do dash 2B, because this is a very good, decently long range poke for this character. So those two options, aren't that bad. In a vacuum, those are not bad options per se. 
The problem is when my opponent knows that those are my only two options, they're going to find out a creative way to beat both of those or a way just to avoid dealing with either of these situations. That's the part in neutral that gave me the most trouble is figuring out, okay, they know how to deal with this. They know how to deal with this. I don't know what I should be doing to deal with whatever action they have now chosen. So let's pause really quick. Again, the way that makes sense for me to think about this was offense makes a lot of sense to me. On offense, you can have, there's multiple ways that you can string together your pressure. Some people get stuck on very binary pressure. Like imagine if my only game plan was do buttons until I'm pushed out or two jabs and a throw. If that is my only pressure, then pretty much after two jabs, my opponent is gonna be like, oh, I can beat them with one option. I can just DP right here because either an attack or a throw is coming and just beat them. That's an example of where binary options may fail. So thankfully I understand pressure a bit more than neutral. That's where we start building in frame traps. We start delaying our pressure, making things more ambiguous. And then also instead of just doing like dash up throw, we could go for dash up buttons to beat them trying to jump or do something else. And then to beat DPs, we can just wait. There's a lot of layers to offense, and that part has almost always made sense to me. It's a part that I think is pretty easy to latch onto when you're learning fighting games, is how offensive structure should work. Especially if you have a very simple linear character, and there's a lot of characters in Melty Blood and other games that play a very simple game plan. So, simple game plan helps with that, but they're also... Neutral still is going to be tough no matter your character, I think, especially in Melty Blood, because in Melty Blood, you have a shitload of air options. There's a lot of places you could land. There's a lot of ways you can move around. There's a lot of other unique burst movement options. Like there's a lot of crazy options in this game. So thinking about how the interactions play out is I think a bit tougher in Melty, but once you can wrap your head around it, I think you can go pretty far in deciphering how neutral works. So let me now go into like a practical example. So let's say my game plan is just dash 2B and falling button. These are my only two options I can use right now. If I'm the opponent, I can figure out ways to beat both of these options. So that right there is like a pretty, this is a pretty common situation in Melty. Let me switch this back, here we are. In Melty, if I'm delaying my air buttons purposely to hit a lot of things on the way down, I'm not hitting on the way up. So a way you can beat me if I'm just sitting and falling with buttons is to hit me on the way up. So what the AI is doing here is he's waiting and then he's jumping with a button. And if we're like at the same point in the game, he's <laughs> on like, if we're at the same point, he should beat me in most situations like that. So then if I was doing my other option, the thing with this is he still has ways to adapt this to beat me. So let's say I don't go high this time. I go low. Now I'm in a bad spot. I went for that dash 2B and now I'm in a bad spot under him and he falls down on me with a button. So now both my options were just beat by this one string that he does. So let's come back here. 
So now my game plan is totally foiled. And I don't know how to adapt because I'm not thinking too much about neutral interactions up till this point. The first thing that comes to my mind is, well, what if we played with our timing? And we chased him afterwards. This is reactive gameplay, and it's good. However, you can still get owned by stuff like that. And sometimes you just don't get a reward. Ultimately, I'm still choosing like the same two options. Like if I wait for him to land and then try chasing, I can do that. The problem with this type of thinking, well, there's a good thing and a bad thing. So the good thing is to recognize that timings really matter for this type of thing. If I'm in the air first and put out my button, he's going to lose. He's going to get hit, and that's my reward. So timing is a big factor here. And a smart player will know how to play around your timings. Adjusting your timings is important, but if you're still choosing the same options, they're going to have options that just beat you regardless. They're going to nail down those options, they're going to know your timings, and they're like, oh, I know this option now that I've used covers two different timings and two different options. Now there's nothing I can do again. Now I'm stuck and thinking, how do I beat this? This is super, super straightforward, but I'm stuck because this and this is all I know. And now I just get owned for doing either of these. So then you have to think, this is like, I'm pretty close to the end of my rant here, but this is where you got to think a little more creatively. So if, for example, he knows I'm just kind of sitting here and doing this, and we're like going up at the same time so he beats me. If he understands that's how it's gonna play, maybe I've got to take a different action. Use something else to call out that initial jump forward rising attack that he's doing. And thankfully there's a lot of actions. One is I could chase under him and then follow him up into the air. This one's a pretty good one. And I put him in block string there. Let's go back to neutral one more time for that. Stuff like that, for example. Another option I could do is make space, see where he's going, and then just chase afterwards. Avoid the situation and then capitalize afterwards, instead of putting myself at risk of getting hit by going in immediately each time. There I tried another option that didn't exactly work because of the timing. That's an instant air dash into a button. With the right timing and spacing, that can work and it can be very rewarding. Neutral is pretty much entirely about the timing you're doing something the spacing you're doing, and also the option you're choosing. For me, I had left the option choice pretty much unexplored. I think what really clicked was once I started realizing the only two options I've been using is this and this. And there again, we get owned by both. <laughs> we get owned by that, and we get owned by that falling JC when he comes down. So I've got to think of different options. And again, here's the thing with Melty Blood is there are a lot of different options. There's some that serve like the same purpose almost. Like um, if I was doing dash 5A, this is like a pretty low commit way to check for people moving forward along the ground or moving forward in the air. So that's a good option that can cover multiple things. But this also loses to very strong jump ins. If they've got a disjointed jump in and I try doing this, I'm going to get blown up for it. So then, in that situation, if I was doing this to try to beat them dashing or air dashing, I lose to a jump in attack. Now my next time I come back to neutral, if I think, ah, okay, they beat me with a jump in last time, what can I do now to beat a jump in? Maybe it's a rising quick attack. Something to quickly just hit them out if they're coming down late with a jump in attack. That's the type of thinking that it applies across all games. It's going to apply across all games because every game has a neutral state. And in that neutral state, you've got to think, 
where do I want to be? And for my character, it's like, I want to be like right here or right here. I want to be right on top of them, ready to hit them. And how do you get there? If your way to get there is something very linear, like just always a dash attack, always an air dash, always a jump into a, like another jump or like that, something like this. If your if your way to get in is always linear, they're going to figure that out and they're going to find an option to beat you. And then you'll be stuck until you figure out how do I beat that option. And sometimes the option they choose may not be good. For example, if this Nania If he, if there's not any I'm playing against, maybe he knows that I go for like air dash and he goes for a DP. This is a decent option to stop air approaches, but the problem is I have good ways to beat it if I just chill. I can just blow him up for that. So recognizing what's going to beat them when they do that option is really important again in pressure this is always this is something i think that's very easy to pick up in pressure i'm doing pressure and then suddenly i'm like man this guy is just blocking everything how do i beat that you could throw maybe you go for an overhead maybe you go for a cross up maybe you go for like a reset and then once they start having answers to those you've got to find different answers you can't be like you can't be scared of what answers they have. You've got to find a way to just keep your pressure usually or blow up what they're doing consistently. You shouldn't just give up pressure. In the same way, you shouldn't just give up neutral. This is almost like giving up on neutral. <laughs> when I'm doing this, I am praying that someone's going to make the mistake and that I'm going to hit them and win the game for it. Yeah. So, going back through it one more time. The goal in neutral, your three goals in neutral is, well, I'd say your three objectives to winning neutral is, one is find out where you want to be. Two is understand where your opponent wants to be. Three is understand what your options to getting in are. Four, understand what your opponent's options for getting in or keeping you out are. And five, look at the screen and figure out how to beat what they're doing to you. And again, I think <laughs> it's funny because I think the explanation is super simple. Like, I understand pressure very, very easily. I think that totally made sense to me. But coming into neutral, I didn't understand it until I was looking at it through the lens of pressure until I was like, oh, this is just like pressure. When I'm pressuring someone and I have to go for a throw, that's just like when I know they're going to block like this attempt. They're gonna beat this attempt of me getting in. So I've gotta find a different way to get in. That's the way you've gotta figure stuff out for neutral. It's why, it's why neutral neutral is hard. <laughs> I'm not going to say neutral is easy. Neutral is hard. It's one of those things that you probably don't get to think about very much until you're very comfortable with a lot of aspects of the game. Until you're comfortable doing your combos, running your game plan, blocking against certain characters, until you have all of that under your belt, I think it's tough to put effort into neutral. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think you can just be, you can just do clown shit and it'll work sometimes. And in a game like Melty, which is super volatile, you can get very far just doing clown options. It's wild like what I've done so far in this game without having put in proper thinking into neutral. That's just how it is sometimes.